Previously on Sagebrush Soul, we built a custom headlight mount, fabricated a springer seat, and extended the handlebars to accept some light controls. Today we'll make a panel to accept a 12 volt regulator and I'll show you how I wired it all up. My original plan was to add a charging system and battery to the Mini, but I realized I didn't need it. However, I will show you where I decided to mount the regulator and how it'll fit into my plan if needed in the future. I decided I'd make a mount near the charging coil location. To protect it, I wanted to make a guard, so to speak, to keep the elements off of it. To do this, I made a pattern with one of our old monster truck posters and transferred that to an old aluminum street sign. I used some eighth by one inch strap to make the mounting braces. Just disregard my shitty welds. Nothing to see here. I marked the mounting tabs on the aluminum and drilled out the mounting holes that will attach to the frame of the bike. Then I marked the holes for the regulator to mount to. I removed the triple tree to get a straight shot to drill the holes in the brackets and test fit the regulator. Although I didn't wind up using the regulator, the guard added a fair amount of style and provided a great place to mount a horn. I used the dummy tank to house as much of the electrical connections as I could. That meant I had to drill some access holes in the tank and some grommets to protect the wires. As far as how I wired the bike, all the video I shot was just confusing, so I'm just going to lay out a diagram on the chalkboard. This might not be the most exciting video I've ever done, but it should be pretty comprehensive. First, we'll start with the battery. This is a compact rechargeable battery designed to run LED decorative lights. I was just using it to test my connections, but it actually wound up being good enough to cover all my electrical needs. Hence, not needing to mount a bigger battery or use the engine's charging system. Everything fits in the dummy tank and I secured it with a Velcro strap. We'll start by getting our ground set up for all the components. I just used a grounding strip. I installed this using some double-sided tape. Then I connected the battery ground to the ground strip and to the chassis. Now we'll wire the headlight switch. I did this a little differently because I wanted to be able to turn the lights off all together. And I ordered the wrong switch to do that. I'm going to use the left signal switch to power the headlights because I am not installing signal lights on this. I connect the feed to the positive side of the battery. Now we connect the load side of the signal switch back into the brown wire that feeds a low beam and high beam switch. Then I connect the low beam wire from the switch to the appropriate wire on the headlight. And the same with the high beam side of the switch. I went ahead and wired the off-road lights into the high beam lights just to avoid having to put in another switch. Moving on, the horn is pretty self-explanatory. I connect the feed to the power. Then I go from the horn switch to the uh, horn. The main reason I grounded the chassis was to be able to ground the horn through its mount, which didn't work and I wound up grounding it to the chassis with a wire. In an earlier video, I mentioned I was going to add a brake light. For the brake light switch, it's similar to the horn. I just connect the feed to the power, then run the other wire back to the brake light. I could have grounded the light at the mounting location to the chassis, but I wanted to keep it looking clean back here, so I ran the ground into the tank and to the grounding strip. The tail light just connects into the main power supply that turns on with the battery switch. The headlight came with a blue LED halo and I wanted to add some underglow lights to go with it. These little guys throw a lot of light and with just a little drilling they mount to the underside of the engine plate. I drilled three holes to make room for everything and bolted them on with the provided hardware and cut the excess off the little screws. I just ran the halo wire to the main power and it is already grounded through the headlight ground. Pretty much the same with the underglows. They just run on the main power and again, to keep it clean, I ran the ground to the power strip. Just like the tail lights, these all turn on when you switch on the battery. That concludes my current setup, but now I'll show you how I was going to set up the charging system. I'm going to recommend Red Beard's garage video to see how to set up the charging coils. I haven't done it yet, so I don't have any footage of it and he does a great job of explaining it. First we need to wire the regulator rectifier to the charging coils with the pink and yellow wire. If you only have one charging coil, you can use either wire. Then we ground the rectifier to the engine and the battery. Speaking of batteries, I don't know if this battery is going to get along with this system, so a 12 volt lawnmower battery is probably a better option. 
Then we run the red charge line from the rectifier to the battery. Make sure to at least put a fuse in the main power line if you're using a regular battery. The one I'm using has a very sensitive protection circuit built in so I didn't bother. If you're using just LEDs the way I have the bike wired is plenty good for my needs but if you're going to be on long trail rides or adding a starter I'd definitely go with a charging system and the lawnmower battery. I really hope this video helped you in some way. Next time we'll paint, assemble and wrap up this build. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kenny. This is Sagebrush Soul and may the best of your past be the worst of your future.